A slave narrative. Slave narratives were the autobiographical accounts of the physical and spiritual journey from slavery to freedom. In the narratives, women focus on the role of family relationships and the men emphasize on the unjust circumstances of the government. Male narrators and male experience dominate the slave narrative genre. These incidents could be found in judicial records, broadsides, journals, newsletters, as well as separately published books. The slave narrators became more prevalent during the abolition movement in the late 1800s. Narrators help us understand where we are today and gives us insight on what we must do as we look into the future. The purpose of the slave narrative were to inform society of the brutality, dehumanization, and degradation that occurred during slavery. The slave narratives gives us a contrasting look on American history. Frederick Douglass's autobiography and Harriet Jacobs' incident in the life of a slave girl are two examples of slave narratives. These narratives gives us a gross description of some of the events that happened to these two individuals as they were captive in slavery. The bravery depicted in these narratives describe how strong a person had to be to endure the inhumane treatment as a slave. Jacob authored her book under pseudonym of Linda Brent to avoid recognition after publication and to keep her family out of harm's way. Jacob changed her grandmother's name from Molly Hornblow to Aunt Martha, her son John S. Jacobs to Benny, and her daughter Louisa Matilda Jacobs to Ellen in the narrative. One very descriptive pas passage shared by Jacobs is one in her book about her mistress. My mistress had taught me the precepts of God's word. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What's ever ye what that man should do unto you? do even so unto them. But I was her slave. And I suppose she did not recognize me as her neighbor. I will give much to blot out from memory that one great wrong. As a child, I loved my mistress. And looking back on the happy days I spent with her, I try to think with less bitterness of this act of injustice. This was the same mistress that taught Jacobs how to read and write. Douglas did not need to use a pseudonym to write his autobiography, but he did have two additional versions titled My Bondage and Freedom, 1855, and The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass, 1881. Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, fathered by his owner, changed his name to Douglas, which he took from Sir Walter Scott's poem, Lady of the Lake, 1810. Douglas was self-taught how to read and write and understood the importance of literacy. Douglas writes in his autobiography about injustices. Where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, where ignorance prevails, and where any one class is made to feel that society is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, degrade them, neither person nor property will be safe. After obtaining his freedom, Douglas discussed his concerns about the politics and unjust system in his anti-slavery newspaper the North Star. Slave narratives were created to have a dialogue between African Americans and white Americans around the institution of slavery. The melodramatic tones of the slave narratives are filled with emotions and bondage. 
Although there were many more important autobiographies written by African Americans that account for the testimony of slavery, Harriet Jacob and Frederick Douglass narratives were the most popular and gave American literature insight on how American were how African American were treated in slavery. Thank you.